Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Thursday night, 6 p.m., with the Outside of the Locker Room online TV show. I'm Jake Edwards, and I'm joined by, yet again, the great man himself, Robert Dippiard de Benico, also known as <laughs> well, Dippa. Thank you for coming, the great man. Uh, thanks very much. This is our fifth week that we've got the, the TV is. show up and running, and we've had some wonderful guests uh, throughout the, the couple of weeks, and uh, I should like to say thank you for uh, everybody who's uh, supported us. What sort of week have you had? It's been a busy week, Dip. Um, just been kind of getting to the weekend at the yeah. moment. There's been a lot going on, obviously, with COVID-19 still affecting yeah. our sporting communities, but it yeah. seems like we're almost, hopefully, not too far away from getting some sport back involved in our community. I think this week I've heard a lot, a lot more people talk about mental health uh, because mm. people are now uh, week 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. and uh, you know, mental health you know, covers a lot, but it's like... I heard uh, Raining Boyle, uh, who was one of our oh, great yeah. champions, and she uh, spoke on a podcast just recently about, about her depression. She's been depressed virtually for 12 months in bed, yeah, and, right. uh, and, and no one really knew about that. But that's, yeah. that's, a lot, uh, that's happening a lot there, Jake. Have you found that at the, uh, yeah. uh, at, outside of uh, the locker room? We have, mate, yeah, especially with a lot of people in our, in our industry with yeah. sport. They've, they've lost that connection and that, that um, community feel around um, your sport, your mates, and getting around... Uh, yeah, I, you know, so. I interviewed uh, Bradley Hill today, and yeah. one thing he, he loved about going back this week was just getting around the boys and all the yeah. all the silly stuff. I, I mean, that's the footy world, as we know. But uh, who have we got on this week, mate? Mate, it's been a great show ahead. For, uh, once again, our fifth week, yeah. we're still hanging around, which has been great. Dude. But before we do that, uh, I just want to give a shout out to everyone who's consistently watched and anyone new watching tonight. Our side locker room is a charity. We're a well-being, well, a welfare and education program committed to sporting clubs and schools and supporting people with their mental health and other issues that can affect our lives. We had some special guests the last few weeks and tonight isn't any different. But before we get on to that, we just want to give another quick shout out to a couple of our sponsors yeah. for tonight. How exciting. Um, okay. Yeah, go for it, mate. All well, yours. this is a new one here. This is the Northern Motor Group. Uh, unbelievable people down there. They're like family. Uh, uh, Nick and the guys down there, they look after them with my cars. But how's this? The Northern Motor Group, if you go down to Grimshaw Street, Bandura, if you're looking for a car and you buy a car, they're going to give you three years free service. If, how many years? Three. Three years free service. I got another year out of him, but <laughs> and, and, and they got all different type of cars: Isuzu, Kias, MGs, Jeeps. I, I usually uh, drive around the SRTs and the Jeeps and uh, and the Kias, the little stingers. Beautiful. But uh, but Jake, some really good news is uh, yeah. they're not taking the money for the service. What they're doing is uh, they're going to accumulate and give it to our charity, which is Absolutely. outside the locker room. So we thank yeah. you very much, Nick, and the guys yeah. down there at the uh, Northern Motor Group, Grimshaw Street, uh, Bandura, and yeah. also AFL uh, Team Zone, AFL Team Coach. If you ask a great question, like uh, Angela did last week. Yeah, she'll be in tomorrow to pick up her box of cards. The box of cards, so we're to get there. So we thank you so much, and it's been five weeks that you've uh, sponsored this little program. And if anybody out there, Jake, wants to get involved with us, Jump on our website, or please, we can't encourage you guys enough tonight, leave your questions below, because at the very end, Dipper yeah. and I are going to answer those questions as, uh, as best as we can. As best we can. So, uh, and, and thanks, Nick, also from uh, Northern Motor Group. Yeah. We really appreciate that, mate, and the team down there do a great work. Uh, our local legend tonight is Shane Ford, who's on the line. He is waiting. We'll get to Shane in a minute, yep. uh, which we're very excited. So his background's in lawn bowls, Dipper, in Australia. Well, so it has become very popular. It has become very popular. Yeah. I know my mum is an avid lawn bowler. <laughs> I'm she... a carbon bowler. Are uh, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a carbon bowler, but it, it's, it's about that bias. It's, you know, like, uh, you know, I was on a boat this recently called the True North doing my travel show. It yeah. starts this Saturday at 2 o'clock on 7, mate. Dipper's Destinations. Just check that one in. Um, and uh, I, I, just couldn't get, I just couldn't get the bowl rolling and uh, and the loser had to buy a drink. And I, I, it cost me a fortune. Or well, you would have been very Actually, drunk ben, by then, Ben, our cameraman over there, he got it pretty well. Anyway, <laughs> we'll find out the ins and outs of... Uh, yeah, bowling. Of carbon bowling and more uh, bowling. I'm sure, uh, Shane, we got some, some tips, mate. Not sure yeah. we'll be any good at it, but we'll find out. And we've got a Leo Barry, we've got a Dipper's Vault, a little bit of a, a twist on our Dipper's Vault tonight. We'll touch on that a little bit later on, which will be quite funny. And then our special guest is Paul Salmon, who is obviously a Hall of Famer. Uh, uh, Team of the Century for Essendon, both Essendon and Hawthorne. Hawthorne and and yeah. he made the Hawthorne one. He was only there <laughs> three years. Come on, fish man. <laughs> but they, they call him the fish. And uh, fish, yeah. he's a great person now and, and a true friend to us here. And moving on after that, we'll get into our Q&A. But we're going to jump to a quick ad break right now. We'll have a quick message from our guys in Northern Motor Group. Here we go. And we'll come back uh, with Shane Fordham after this, our local legend. 
I think it's the left hand bowl and the right hand bowl. <laughs> it's uh, the jack. I don't know. G'day, Dipper here at Northern Jeep, and today we're answering the call of the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee Night Eagle, a masterpiece with a dark side. This limited edition SUV is wrapped in black, tough-looking fit-outs. From its blacked-out badging and lower front facade, custom gloss black alloys, to these piercing fog lamps and towel and bezels. One look at the Night Eagle and you'll be hooked inside this cabin that awakens all of your senses. And with this unmistakable road presence, the Grand Cherokee Night Eagle is an SUV that stands out everywhere you go. Take a look at these amazing Capri Black leather seats with perforated suede inserts, brilliant instrument cluster, leather steering wheel with mounted controls, push button start, and a large 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen. Fitted with SatNav, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. In terms of safety, the Grand Cherokee Night Eagle ticks all the boxes with a reverse parking camera, front and rear parking sensors, electronic stability control, and much, much more. Northern Jeep currently have the largest stock in Melbourne with 40 Grand Cherokee Night Eagles. Staying from 56,990 drive away, there's no better place to come and take a look at this special edition model. Get ready to rule the streets with the Night Eagle. Test drive one today at Northern Jeep, 429 to 439 Grimshaw Street, Bandura. Be there. Right, everyone, welcome back. And uh, you're everywhere, Dip. We got you here and live in the show. <laughs> we got you on the ad break. Yeah. Uh, I got a TV show, <laughs> show coming up on Saturday. I've got a new thing called I'm the Pine Menace in Pine Solation. <laughs> Check out Instagram uh, at uh, Dip of the Hawk. That's but, the one. But anyway, but more importantly, we're here with our special guest. We are. So, local legend is Shane Fordham, who's been a part of our program as a facilitator for our community sporting uh, program in the, in the community, Dip. And, a little bit of his background, Shane, I'm going to introduce him here. So he's a, he's a lawn bowler by trade. Uh, he's a re representative of Australia in lawn bowls and under 25s. He's played 19 games for Victoria. And I was speaking to him yesterday. 99 games, not Sorry, 19. 99 games for Victoria. 999! No, no, no. <laughs> and um, anyway, so he retired in 99. He, he's not sure why he didn't just play <laughs> one more game. But uh, he's the most premierships at a premier division with uh, eight. Wow. And single state champion and the youngest ever state pair champion champion at age of 19 years of, uh, of age and I have no idea what that actually means in pair champions so Shane Fordham welcome to the show mate and thanks for joining us. G'day Jake Dipper thanks for having me guys. No worries at all now listen as a young fellow mate why don't you play a real game? Why don't you get out there and get bumped and, and you know crawl for the ball or whatever? How did you get involved with this great game which just be it's just exploded across Australia and the world? Yeah, well, look, I've actually been involved for about 30, uh, 32 years now, wow. uh, Dipper. I started when I was uh, 11 years old, so um, it's absolutely uh, taken off uh, since then, no doubt about it. And uh, it's just fabulous to see so many, uh, you know, corporate events, birthdays, hen's, party, uh, hen's parties, bucks parties, going to the bowls club now. It's, uh, it's just fantastic, and it's giving the sport a lot of exposure. It's great. It, it's been one of those things, and I think generally on a Friday or a Sunday afternoon, barefoot bowls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get around that does, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful environment, and you know, a few beers and throw some balls down the Actually, green. Actually, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, one of our, uh, well, one of my great, you know, father figures was Alan Jeans. He mm. loved his bowls down at St Kilda. You probably know that, uh, uh, Shane. That's right. Yeah. A and yep. uh, one day we decided to turn up with Dermot, myself, Jason Dunstall, Johnny Platt, and whatever. <laughs> And we went to end to end, which means you, every time you bowl the ball down the jack, they get in there. And we were like, oh, yeah, well done, Yabby. Oh, yeah, it's nice roll, Yabby. And he was, he was furious, you know. Because <laughs> he was having a crack of us, you know. We go, ah, yeah, you might be dropped this week. And, and he got dropped twice. Yeah. He got dropped in the foursome. He got dropped. How can you get dropped in the foursome? Anyway, that can happen, can't it? 
It certainly can. Uh, but the great thing about it, and as you guys have uh, both experienced, it's uh, it's such a great sport for really anyone to get involved. You know, regardless of athletic ability, age, um, you know, even I suppose physical capabilities. It's a very inclusive sport, and uh, I haven't yet anyone that's been along to uh, a social function and and has it enjoyed it. It doesn't necessarily mean everyone's going to transition into the sport and play it uh, long term, but it's certainly an enjoyable uh, time when you're there. That's for sure. Especially as you said, uh, Jake, bare feet, music going, maybe a maybe a couple of quiet beers. It's great. Yeah, it certainly is, mate. But outside of lawn bowls, you've also got a uh, interest in other sports, Shane. And then um, you came in to our program uh, with a little bit of a story, mate, playing local football as well. You want to tell us a little bit about your journey there and what got you involved with outside locker room? Yeah, well, I did play uh, local footy as well. I mean, I played juniors right through to, um, oh, I guess I was 18. I, I was uh, lawn bowls in the summer and, uh, and footy in the winter. And I guess... Um, uh, I was going really well through the juniors in, in bowls and, you know, representing Victoria and winning state titles, things like that. Uh, it was the exact opposite in the footy career come winter time. <laughs> so, uh, so um, no, I decided uh, uh, very wisely to transition into uh, make bowls my number one sport. And, and um, look, it's been incredibly good to me. I've been fortunate enough to represent Australia and um Victoria, um, visited several countries overseas on, on tours with the Aussie squad and uh, camps at the Australian Institute of Sport. It's been, it's been fantastic. And, um, yeah, I think I made a good choice. I know my mother was very pleased that I uh, chose bowls and not footy. So, um, but no, no, no regrets. I, I think it's been, it's been a good time. Uh, I was going to ask you, you've got the wonderful T-shirt there, OTLR. Just tell us how you got involved and why you get involved. Yeah, thanks, Dipper. I, I, um, the reason I got involved was uh, I've been through some challenges myself around mental health, um, something I, uh, I guess, through naivety, never thought um, that I would ever be uh, exposed to it or, or experience it. But, but as I know now through education and um, you know, being a bit more involved, particularly with outside the locker room, is it, it, it can happen to anyone. It's no different to a physical uh, you know, illness or, or, or ailment. Um, but when I went through that experience, which was which was pretty horrible, to, to be quite frank, um, I guess it really opened my eyes to um, the fact that anyone um, can can I suppose have these experiences, and I guess more so, a lot of people are having those experiences. I was really became more aware of what was going on around me, uh, and then continued to look further and see some pretty significant problems in the community, and so I actually um, uh, proactively jumped online and tried to find some form of you know, foundation or organisation that I might be able to volunteer with, and I'm absolutely wrapped that I that I come across Jake and the team at, at OTLR, and I've been involved with the with the gang for the last couple of years, running um, you know education and support sessions out there in um, local sporting clubs, and it's just been fabulous. It's continued to open my eyes up um, even more as to how serious this issue is, um, and and I just love it. It's just so great to feel like we're really making a difference, and you know, we walk away from those sessions and. We either have an experience on the night or, or head back a couple of days later from our welfare team that, that we've helped someone, specifically someone's reached out who was struggling. It, it makes it all worth, worthwhile. It's really, really, really great. It's really good uh, feedback, Shane, and you've been a really integral part, mate, of our program. We can't thank you enough for all the support you've done for us and your commitment towards our message. And what our Shane values. says there about when we do our little gigs uh, mm. at... Uh, you know, in schools, in corporate, you know, talking to someone and they stand up and they want to be part and they engage with you. And that's mm-hmm. just gives you a great feeling, doesn't it? We've had uh, young uh, children yep. who get up and sing songs in front of their uh, peers. peers mm-hmm. And at the end of it, they go, oh, uh, we didn't know you, that you could sing. And they have another you know, love for this person. You know, that's just a, a wonderful experience. Yeah. And also, mate, well, well we weren't sure how we kind of intro Shane with this or not, but you're a mad Geelong sport, aren't you? That is true. A very, no, you'll get uh, very passionate cats man. <laughs> you'll get over it. I don't think Dibber's ever, ever lost a game to Geelong in his no, entire never. career. So. Oh, well, look, this is not about me. It's about Shane, but never. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Shane, just tell us, have, have you got a bowl or near you? Have you got a bowl near you? you got a, a ball? ball? Have you got a bowl? Made a bowl? Oh, bowl? Not, no? not right there, me okay. mate, out in the garage, sorry. All right, so you've got circles, right, on one side or both sides? Uh, both sides. So both sides. And one is heavier than the other, correct? Uh, incorrect. 
Oh, incorrect. incorrect. Right. Yeah, okay. uh, certainly one side is, uh, is larger rings than, than the other to try and, I guess, give you a, uh, an understanding that, you know, of the difference between both sides. Right. But what actually makes the bolt turn, contrary to what a lot of people think, where it's weighted, the actual, um, the actual centre of the bowl is actually off centre. Uh, sorry, the highest point of the bowl is off centre, which makes the bowl right. lean. So as it starts to slow down, it turns. So, okay, so um, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go right to left, right? Are the big circles inside or outside? Always little circle on the inside, Dipper. Always little circle on the inside. Right up. So Absolutely. if I'm going left to right, little circle on the inside. Okay. Can you bowl both hands? Uh, oh, I muck around with both hands, but no, usually uh, usually just one, the right hand, uh, particularly in competition. Yeah, there's a couple of players that, that do um, actually have different shots that they play um, with one in the right hand, one in the left, but... No, I like to keep it pretty simple and just stick to the right hand, mate. It's hard, hard enough in the right hand, let alone trying to master both. Right. A little one on the inside. Yeah, yeah don't forget mate, that. Mate. And like I said earlier, my mum over the last six, probably even 12 months, has got right into her little right. bowls. And my, my, I think Off the she, farm? Well, no, well, she leaves the farm to go and, yeah. and uh, participate. I think she tries to get out, you know, get out of my old man's, um, or you know, vice versa, and get away from my dad is probably what I'm trying <laughs> to say. Uh, but I know my mum's uh, really, really enjoying it, mate, and it's a fantastic sport but just before we uh before we let you go who's the best player that you've seen play the game of uh of football of football uh yeah. well being a uh being a mad cats man I, i'd have to say uh gary ablett and then i Senior or junior? I was just going to say then is it a is it a jr or a snr yeah. on the end uh look i have to say i'd say gary ablett uh, senior um yeah. you know i was fortunate enough to be there many years ago um to see the guests you've got coming on later, Paul Salmon kicked 10 goals at one end and, and Gary kicked 14 goals seven yeah, at the other end. Yeah, amazing game that was. Uh, unbelievable. It's hard to imagine that, that he could kick 14 goals and we lost by four goals still. <laughs> but um, yeah, Gar- Gary Ablett, both of them are unbelievable. It's just amazing yeah. to uh, to think that two people in the same family could be so frequent. Well, the whole family is Jeff Ablett, Kevin Ablett, uh, uh, Michael Tuck's their uh, brother-in-law. Nathan uh, Ablett. Uh, Nathan Ablett. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, hey, just a quick one. Just on the mental health side of things, tell us a bit about lawn bowls before we let you go. Lawn bowls, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for something to do, you know, just tell us about your sport, how we can you know, use your, yeah, right. uh, your mind around it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think uh, just reaching out to the local club, if there's a particular function you've got on, whether it's a, a birthday, a, a bucks party, or a corporate function, reach out to the local club. Most clubs now are, are really open to, to bring... bring um, you know the general public into to have have a bit of a go. Um, it's a it's a really vital income stream for uh, the clubs, uh, which is uh, you know the clubs do it, do it, do it fairly hard. Um, but it's also fantastic for you know really anyone to get involved. I mentioned earlier, it's such an inclusive sport. Uh, you know you can have people with disabilities, people at any age, um, get it getting involved. You know so yeah. Um, look, mental health is actually a big. It's every single sport. It's, a, it's actually an issue in uh, in lawn bowls. You know, you've, you've indicated that or uh, alluded to the fact that, you know, maybe a few beers with the game. Um, <laughs> I can assure you that that's actually fairly, fairly common, which um, is probably not ideal in terms of trying to manage uh, mental health. So um, like every sport, we, we have our own um, issues and it's something that I'm trying to, uh, I suppose, help with. So I reach out to, to people that I know in the sport that are... Um, you know, maybe doing a little tough or, or struggling. I certainly try and share through my social um, social media, you know, different um, resources and different sort of, you know, I, I guess things that can well, help. Well played to you, um, mate. Well played to you, Shane. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Thanks, mate. Still plenty Look, we'll, of work to go. We'll, um, we'll let you go, but thanks for jumping on and joining us, Shane. You're a terrific asset to our program. Are you on a bowls card? Are you on like a footy card? Have you got like a footy card? <laughs> you should get one. Well, <laughs> Give I'll it a polish. <laughs> <laughs> I think my card might be worth a little less than yours, Dipper. <laughs> All right, mate. We'll let you go. And thanks again for joining us, Shane. Really thanks, appreciate boys. it. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having yeah, me. Well done. Thanks, it's well, just thanks. great to learn about another sport. And, and we've all had a bit of a go at long bowls. It's not that easy, but very competitive. Very competitive. And it, I always see when I can tell the difference even um, when mum comes home from, like, she's very happy. She's had a good win. And she's <laughs> been a little bit down. She's had, hasn't had such a good day on the green, as they call it, Dip. But now we're going to jump to another quick break. And when we come back, uh, Dipper will be joined by Andy. Uh, for five minutes before we hand over to the Leo Barry segment uh, after that. See you soon.
Hello and welcome back to the show. Uh, we've got Andy Anderson here, the CEO and founder of Ultimate You. And uh, mate, great to see you. Thanks for having me. I love seeing Once you. Again. Every week. I love just, seeing you, you too, you, mate. You just make me so happy. <laughs> Are you always Your happy? Your show makes me happy. Yeah, no, not all the time. No. Uh, no. We, all, we all have our ups and downs, don't we? Yeah, because yeah. last week you were telling us about the fact that uh, as a young fellow, you, you're a big fella. Yeah. As, as far as, you know, weight, not uh, as much as you are today. Yeah. You got picked on a fair bit. And, yeah. Um, you know, your brother unfortunately has some struggles in life, absolutely, and, yeah. um, and he's passed on, yeah. Uh, and that really affected you, and, and you sort of made a change in your own life, mm, absolutely, yeah, 100%. I mean, everyone faces these ups and downs, as you guys yeah. know, you guys are fighting the, the battle and, and helping so many people, and um, and yeah, I've been through it. and my brother committed suicide, as you just mentioned. So it affects all of us, and unfortunately, it's um, it's happening more and more. So you know, getting the awareness out there is really important. And just on that point uh, about your brother, I mean, mm. did you feel as though that you you know you felt oh, could I have done something or should I have said something mm. or did you know anything? Yeah, I mean, we were definitely helping you, but we did not know how far it had gone, right. and that was why that was such a shock to us. And you know, I regret not being able to do more every single day of my life, but um, all I can do now is try to Be help others yeah, yeah exactly well so, you are helping a lot of people mm. uh you know like <coughs> fear we mm. all have fear yeah. um, fear under the ball fear going to a pack as i yeah. did uh fear of uh you know bodybuilding mm. uh, because you've got to work hard and you know fear of competing yes uh, so uh how can we think mm. about fear mm. about being a, a friend not yeah. a foe absolutely I, I think you hit the nail on the head you've got to look at fear i mean my, my greatest three tips would be number one understand that you have to befriend it, not resist it. And what that means is just have an awareness and look deeper into what are you actually afraid of. But it's okay of. to be scared, isn't it? Everyone's scared. Yeah. Even the, the best of the best are scared. I mean, you're a champion, you, were, you felt fear as well. And, oh, absolutely. You know, the, anyone who's trying to achieve anything great is going to feel fear initially. But understand where it comes from. Is it a fear of failure, fear of not being good enough? If you can identify it, you can then learn to overcome it. Number two, I'd say surround yourself with great people, people that inspire you, you know, people like... I get to hang around you, you get to hang around me. We lift each other up rather than bring each other down. That's gonna help us face fear. Number three, I would say you need to be ready to take action before feeling courageous and brave. People sit around their whole lives waiting for the courage to take action, but you have to earn courage after taking action. So it's, it's going around the wrong way. So okay. if you can learn to start taking action in the face of fear, you'll eventually achieve everything you want to. So I'm home, uh, mm. I'm a young lady or, yeah. or, or a young man, Man or middle-aged man, and I just don't feel worthy. Mm -hmm. Now, what I've been, uh, uh, I'll say that because I have been getting a lot of young mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. come up to me and say, I just don't feel worthy, Dip. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I'm not as good as my brother and my sister. I'm not mm -hmm. as good as my mm -hmm. friends. Uh, you know, I've, I, I haven't got the job I always wanted. Where yeah. I just don't feel like mm -hmm. moving on. Mm. What do you say? Yeah. Look, it's a process of building self-belief, but number one, you've got to start looking at yourself in the mirror and, and pinpointing what do you love about yourself, not what you don't love about yourself. Yeah. People's default is to look, wake up in the morning and think about everything negative rather than thinking about how much they have, what they love about themselves, their good True. characteristics. And if you start to focus on that more, you start to build more and more self-confidence. I don't think people will stand in front of a mirror and go, I love myself. That's what we're saying. Mm. It's sort of something you do have to acknowledge who you are so, and, but why not why not yeah. stand in the mirror and say yeah. i love myself like because you should well, well, you not, really should well, it's absolutely not human nature or australian life but yeah. you know let's do it i love myself yeah exactly yeah. right yeah <laughs> i love myself and i love you well it's you. better than hating yourself yeah. and that's the point sure. you've got to look at the things that are positive not negative okay mm. so what we uh what we've learned today is it's okay for fear to have fear absolutely um and also you can you can be scared but you put but you can get over everything possible. Just understand who you are and accept it. Exactly. Stop yeah. resisting the fear, befriend it, and take yeah. action anyway. Wow. And how do you cope with, uh, with the, the gymnasium not opening? No, we ever? choose to thrive, yeah. not to survive. So we're working hard to uh, get everything prepped for Won't reopening. Be Won't be long. Won't be long. And we're, we're yeah. itching to uh, start serving our clients again. Yeah. So we can't wait. Well, that's Andy Anderson and uh, from Ultimate U. Just check out the page. What page do we go to? UltimateU.com.au. And uh, I tell you, he's a very vibrant young man. I always love having uh, been involved with him and, and everyone at Ultimate U. And after uh, he leaves, Jake, he's back with Leo Bally! <laughs>
Good mark by Cox. Cox throws it onto the left. One last roll of the dice for the oh. Well, welcome back, guys, and once again, thanks to Andy Anderson for joining us. Great tips that he has, and a, a really powerful story himself did with his, uh, his brothers uh, passing. And it's no surprise as to why he's so supportive of our, of our charity and the work that we do, which is, uh, which is terrific. And, we, and we're thankful for him, too, because he's given us the, yeah. prem the premises for us to, uh, to do this wonderful show out there. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, Oop. Andy, thank you very much. Yes. You're back in the chair. Leo Barry is back. We're Tell back. us about what you've got going for this right week. Right guys. So the one we've got today is the Sanford Under 18s uh, Grand Final back in 2016. And it was between Glen Allen Football Club Here's and the North Adelaide Football Club. Now at this point in time, as you can see on the camera, uh, we are a draw. We're very late in the game. And that is the North Adelaide kicking to the left there. And the black is the Glen Allen Football Club. How many seconds to go? Kick ten, out of bounds. Seconds. ten seconds to ten go. Ten seconds to go in the grand final. Short kick. In Mark the grand final. I don't think he's got plenty of time. Out, he he it kicks no, it that, that's the Adelaide Oval. Oh, yeah. oh, so we'll, 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 we'll just we'll just be quiet here, and we'll bring in the commentators uh, to bring it home. And it's a very a interesting uh, ending. Bit. Any score will win the grand final. He's kicking into a breeze as well, Michael. Keep we look on. up at the it's scoreboard, the, the flag's blowing <laughs> into his face. He's going to have to kick this ball 70 metres. Toby Pink, what would be going through his mind? Can he get the journey? Can he kick he's a score Sorry, and win the game for the Bays? The Toby ball? Pink, he'll need his best ball burster. Gets close to the man on the mark. It's Look going, it's going. It's not going to make it. Or did it roll through? It oh! rolled through! <laughs> it rolled through from behind. <laughs> oh, no no one won. passed it on the line. The ball bounced, I reckon, around the beginning of the goal square there, Dip. And then the North Adelaide players just stood there. And uh, none of them tried to punch it forward or mark the ball or anything like that. And Where was the Ruckman? <laughs> that's right. You make it, now, you're talking about coaches' killers. That would, that would have to arguably go down. The first it. thing you do is say, it won back, it won back. Yeah. The Ruckman on the, you know, on the, on the line case, uh, you know, if he's six foot three, he's got to kick a ball six foot five to get over him. But, well... We've seen some great ends of, uh, of some great football uh, games. Uh, he's finished the grand final. I mean, yeah. Tony, what was his name here? Young Pink. Pink. Yeah. Yeah, the Young Pink. Yeah. yeah. He would have been the star of Glenelg that night, no doubt. He's going out on the town. But uh, there's another segment with Leo Barry. Uh, please keep sending him through. We've got a few suggestions come through. That was one of them during uh, last week, and more than happy to share those moments. And we do want to share other than football as well. So yeah. I did think about putting together a Michael Jordan thing off the back of the last dance, a couple of... Uh, uh, shots he scored, obviously, to win the game, but I figured that, um, you know, everyone's seen that at the moment, the documentary. Um, I'm halfway through that. Uh, have you finished yeah. it? I have, yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a big MJ fan. You Were you I... before? Yeah, I was. I always had and been. And now you, you have a lot more, a locker room experience. Yeah. Where, what yeah. the, I mean, he was just a man. Oh, he, it's he incredible. He ran the place. Yeah, he really yeah. did, didn't he? Yeah. But he's uh, just an incredible person and incredible athlete. Well, yeah. Are you enjoying it? Uh, I am, yeah, yeah, but I don't have time like you to watch Netflix. You know, I'm <laughs> I've got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go. I mean, you're CEO of a great yeah, organisation. Right. You've got time to watch Netflix? Oh, my God. I, I, hardly, oh. I hardly do, but that's, it, it's very late at night, if any time at all. But we'll go to another quick uh, break. I just want to share this really important video with you all. Uh, this a stigma stops here video. Dip is a part of this as well. Uh, myself, Heath Scotland, Cam White, uh, uh, Nathan Thompson share a really important message around breaking the stigma of mental health and supporting uh, our communities uh, with suicide. Together, we can all make a difference. Speak up and take a stand. Enough is enough. Let's make a change. Together, we can do more. And together, we can all reach zero. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't have lost there. Do I understand mental illness? Not 100%. Certainly, uh, um, I don't, but, um, but I'm seeing a lot of people affected by it. As a player, I remember those great days, but also I remember the down days as well. And, you know, and even today, I'm happy to say that I'm, I wake up at times I don't want to talk to anyone, see anyone. Depression is something that 
I've found is so widespread and such a dangerous illness because of the fact that it makes people want to withdraw from their friends, withdraw from family, withdraw from doing the things that they like doing and feel comfortable with to a point where they, they no longer feel a part of a community or a part of a network. Encouraged to be open and talk about your struggles and, and seek support. Your network, your friends, your family are, are so important and instead of shying away from those people for, for support, uh, actually leaning on them now is important to, to dealing with it. Football being just a manly sport, and I think it's more evolving now that you see it in the news now that people are struggling um, and people are starting to come out forward and, and speak about it. Together, we can reach zero. If you'd like to join us and help share this really important message, please simply share this video or visit our website for more information. Yeah, well, welcome back uh, to Outside the Locker Room, that little TV show we've got going. It's our fifth week uh, on board. And uh, I've got to tell you, Jake, you must have been very proud of those guys putting their hand up uh, to yeah. help out uh, put your yeah. that uh, Stop the Sigma um, video together. Yeah, I was deep. And also, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, it was off the back of Danny Farrell's yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, passing. Yeah. I, found, I just found myself sitting there in the office uh, one day and said, well, we've we got to do something. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, all those boys jumped on, which we're really grateful for. So thank you to them all. No, no worries at all. Now, it's pretty exciting now because we've got Dipper's Vault, but with a bit of a twist. It's actually Dipper's Vault, but Jake's ambushed it. That's right. I've What's taken over. On? I've taken over, Dip. Oh, I've on, taken man. over. I know you're a very busy man during the week, and yeah. um, I figured that this week I'm going to take over and, and play, um, play Jake's Vault. Right. So what I've decided to do is that I, I, I'm stitching you up, actually. <laughs> you are! <laughs> <laughs> Right. A, well, hang on a minute. It, 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 <laughs> I've written here uh, Dipper's top three boundary moments, which I, which I thought it. I thought was uh, quite funny. But I've actually got got a little bit more broader than that. I've picked yeah. Dipper's top three, in my opinion, funny moments. <laughs> and as you can see, the first one that uh, that we're going to share, and that we might get the boys in that to uh, show us on the screen, uh, they get a chance so that uh, Dipper can see what I put together. He's got no idea. So Vossi's hit, all right? Ah, oh, oh, now. <laughs> If you have a look in the background here, there's a... Bang! There's a, look, look at me. Look at the different... Oh, he's up. Here he goes. I've played this a few times. I'm with uh, Wally Lewis, the great Wally Lewis. Yeah, the story you've told me, there's a there's a bottle there somewhere of Coca-Cola, <laughs> but it's not Coca-Cola. Well, <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I do uh, get up to the gather for about 12 years. We, we, we're just yeah. on the hold a bit, because okay. we'll come back at the end, and I'll ask you a bit of story. But this one here is on Hey Hey, uh, and uh, you've Robert sung this to me a hundred times. Written by a great I, on that tour we did from Perth all the way up to... Um, all the way up to Karata. Accident. Accident. Just the case of bad luck. And they're going to have a go. <laughs> Did you know that right? No, I did you know the man he goes. Spreading somewhere wherever I go. I'm on the horse on stock. Did you get the road? No, no, no. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't go anywhere. This is like stitching me up here. Stay. Everyone has to sit there on your couch at home and, and really get yourself around this Oscar performance winning uh, acting by the great man that left yeah. me here. I'm so, called Bruce there. <laughs> Bruce the truck driver looking for his girlfriend Vanessa. <laughs> and, I, and I get into town, uh, into town. I've got tattoos put on me in the morning. Uh, that was... Uh, 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 Lou Richards is actually the one who's uh, talking about this about segment. The Flying Doctors. The Flying Doctors and... I, every, I just think of you, mate. I just can't help. I, I don't know how you didn't win a, a, a prize for this acting, but it's well, got Well, look at that. The way I jumped out. Look at me. And I'm looking for my girl. Yeah, where is she? Where's Vanessa? <laughs> for those watching at home, this is the scene right here that gets me every time. I can't believe this. The doctor, played by, by Robert Grubb, comes up to me and says she doesn't want to see you. I've got, I've had enough of you. So I Watch thought, the punch. I'll punch you. Watch this. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> Look at my foot! The foot's still up! I didn't have to put the foot down! I put the leg down! Oh, oh. Thanks for 
you're stitching me no, up. No, you're welcome. Oh, welcome. Okay. Well, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll just so everyone knows at home, we're trying to keep it quiet. I told the boys before we come here tonight, oh. I'm going to stitch Dip up tonight. And uh, yeah, we, we, we said we we're going to play my highlights or something like that. But no, take us you. back to that first hit with Vossi's hit on the banshee line. That was, uh, I thought Vice here were just split in half there. I, I yeah. was sitting next to Wally Lewis, and Wally's obviously one of the greatest rugby league players of all time. He's been here a few times, and even he, even he, he didn't move. No, he just, oh, that's just a normal <laughs> hit. But, oh, geez, that was... That but was is it true that uh, Channel 7 got Wally involved? They thought they'd get rugby viewers watching or something Yeah, like basically, uh, yeah. Uh, while they were doing the news up there, and they thought, well, why don't you come down and, uh, and join Dipper? I was doing about 87 games a year. I was doing three games a weekend. MCG yeah. on a Friday night or Saturday, Sunday in, in Brisbane or Sydney. And we're some great times, but geez. Yeah, uh, I that hit. But uh, yeah, the bottle was a, that's another yeah, the story for another time, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and then we <laughs> uh, found out it wasn't Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. Look like Coke, but it and, wasn't Coke. And just before we jump into our next guest, Paul <laughs> Salmon, mate, the last thing on those uh, those um, those segments there, I, I actually just you know obviously stole tonight. Um, when when did uh, you get notified about the doctors thing? Did they come to you or oh, your well, agent I, or I, have, I, have you got an agent? I've got an agent. <laughs> Look, I've uh, I've done. Uh, Neighbours? I did Neighbours as well. Yeah, yeah, actually, just thought that. There was one I was going to put up there with Con the Fruit. <laughs> yeah, Con, Con the Fruit, right? I found that one yeah. today and I was uh, like, uh, oh my I've God. I've all those shows. It's just fantastic uh, to be involved in. And here we are. We've got my own TV show with you. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Well, hey, we've come a long way, <laughs> mate. Anyway, right. <laughs> that Con the Fruit one. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, yeah, jump on your phone. Yeah, enough for Because hey, yeah, Dipper apparently kicked his footy into his fruit store. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another place, another time. Jump on YouTube I'm and talk to you. video of you now. Jump on. Oh, you won't find anything funnier than that, I tell you. Right now. Uh, uh, guys, we're going to jump to our an ad break in. Uh, when we come uh, back, we'll have our very special guest, Paul Salmon, is going to join us after this. The big fish. Shaky boy, we're back on air. We are we back on air. Cannot wait to hear, to 
listen to this great man. Yeah, absolutely. So, so give me the honours. I will do the honours. Yeah, it's a fair Get rap sheet. It. It's a fair rap sheet here, I must admit. And let me start from the top and take a deep breath as I go through. So there's 324 games in total with the Essendon Hawthorne Football Club, including 561 goals, represented Victoria 14 times, two-time premiership uh, player VFL and AFL, Three times All Australian dip, seven time leading Get goal kicker at Essendon, two times Peter Crimmins Get medalist, Michael Tuck medal 1999, and AFL Hall of Fame. We're very, very <laughs> proud and excited to have Paul Salmon join us. Thank you for jumping online, Paul. How are you, mate? Good, Jake. Uh, good to hear your voice, mate. And uh, Dipper, how are you going, buddy? I'm going really well, uh, Paul. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And also, on the, the best dressed football I've you've ever seen. And Dr tonight, it looks fantastic. <laughs> best dressed? Always, he's always <laughs> well dressed. He loves cardigans. <laughs> he's a cardigan man and he's the best man, aren't you, Paul? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Dipper's right, I, I, but I, I'm no good at it. This, uh, this little... Um, uh, Cardi zip up has been in the family for a long time. It's, <laughs> the, when the temperatures get cool, it's got a beautiful warm lining. So I'm just a bit snug, mate. It could have been worse. I could have been in a rug or something with a pipe. So I've, I've <laughs> you know, I, I had an opportunity uh, to uh, to play against Paul uh, in, in in the later days, and of course commentated right through. Then he came over to Hawthorne. He came over to the the good side, and uh, <laughs> and uh, had a couple. Wonderful years there, winning the best of uh, a best and fairest winner there. An amazing player for for a guy who's six foot thousand. Yeah, he is a tall man. The first time I met, uh, I think most people will recognise Paul with being a, a ruckman of this size. He's a seven-time leading goal kicker at uh, Essendon. And I can only imagine, Paul, the full backs that would have been walking down to, to face you, mate. Um, take us back to when it all started, back at the Essendon Football Club. Uh, uh, they were exciting days. Um, my first year at Essendon, uh, Jake, was 1981 as a 15-year-old going 16, back when they'd take any young bloke off the street, I think, and see what they were like. But um, <laughs> travelling a fair way from Ringwood to Essendon, so the, 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 the uh, commute was a big commitment in itself. And, um, you know, it was a, an hour and a half both ways. There was no freeway um, back then. So uh, I just remember the community that was developing early around my footy career, with all the, the boys that were travelling from S to Essendon from our, out in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. Um, really happy memories, my under-19s, my reserve, year in the reserves. And, um, you know, aligning that with Kevin Sheedy's start of the footy club, it was a pretty um, intense time in, in some ways because Kevin brought a whole new level of professionalism for that era, um, of the 80s, to the Essendon Football Club. I think he identified the amount of talent he had at his disposal and, and, and he wasn't going to waste that. So mm. um, he gave me my opportunity pretty young, as he did with Bomber Thompson and Mark Harvey um, in those uh, early 80s, mid 80s. And just right time, right place. Uh, an exciting squad of players, some you know, great blokes. And um, and um, I managed to get my hands on the ball a little bit early, which was great to my confidence and um, as a player. And uh, yeah, I think it was a bit of a novelty at the time because... Um, obviously, being six foot nine, and uh, my my strength was not so much my height, but I was pretty athletic and, and I had some speed. So hmm. um, I think it was very early days for that tall guy to take the goal square and open the forward line up. And um, so a novelty factor. I enjoyed that, um, and uh, you know, just enjoyed the the. Um, it was a bit of a circus, really, when I started kicking goals, but it was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, uh, uh, as a fullback. I think they're still, still trying to work out how to, to play on me, whether to play a ruckman on me or a fullback on me. And yeah. um, I remember, if I if you don't mind, I just played on Jeff, Stout, Jeff Southby one day playing Carlton, and um, I played on Kelvin Moore as well. But this particular day, Jeff Southby uh, it was in his last year of football in 1984, and he, he came down to play on me. And this is one of my, although I grew up very for Hawthorne, Jeff was a hero of mine growing up, and um, one of the all-time legends of AFL or VFL at the time. And he said, thank God I'm retiring because I can't put up with this <laughs> any, possibly uh, any further. So he really had a chat to me that day, taught me a lot about the craft. And so anyway, without waffling, it was a, it was a wonderful time. Now, it's true that you had uh, word Rashidi because you wanted to be a ruckman. You just said, playing you more ruck than the forward, but you kept uh, hanging down there. But uh, you got to play the ruck a fair bit as well. Yeah, I did, Dipper. Um, that, that's a bit of a fallacy. I'm happy to come clean on this show exclusively tonight. Um, okay. I was happy being a full forward. Um, I couldn't be happier, but Sheeds was worried about the, the pressure that was being poured on me at the time about kicking goals. And there was a lot of, you know, silly talk around the next John Coleman and stuff at the time. And Yeah, very silly talk. 
It was uh, <laughs> madness. So the, the quick story is that uh, Kevin and I were on a plane going to Auburn to do a promotional gig, um, and he said, uh, how are you coping? And I said, oh, it's, it's new. And he goes, just tell everyone you want to be a ruckman, um, ah. and that will take the pressure off you as a full forward. So I started telling when I was asked, where do you prefer to play? I used to say ruck, thinking it was going to take the pressure off. In, in actual fact, it just put a lot more pressure on because I thought I was a, a, a disenchanted full forward, you know. But, um, you know, it backfired a little bit. Uh, on me, but um, yeah. I was just happy playing league footy, mate, as, as all of us were at the time. Hey, Paul, you mentioned uh, you had one of the AFL legends of the game as Kevin Sheedy as, as your coach. Yeah, well, what was your relationship like with Kevin uh, during your time at Essen? Yeah, good. Good, uh, Jake. He was, um, I, I found him fascinating, to be honest, and I, I hung on every word. Um, a very impressionable young man. Um, uh, a quick anecdote from my first engagement with Kevin. He had a bunch of us, about 20, 25 of the best um, 17 and under um, players from the Essendon zones, um, huddled around him at one stage. And he said, boys, uh, this is at the, at the end of the training session. We weren't allowed to go inside until we got the answer to two questions right. And he said, what's the most important muscle in your body? And, of course, we're all 16, 17. So hands are going up left, right and centre saying, you know, glutes, hamstrings, X, you know, traps, all that sort of stuff. And he says, you're not going to get it. We end up giving in. And he said, the most important muscle in your body is the tongue. And if you don't use it, you won't play league football, right? So I've never forgotten that. And then he said, what's the most important skill in the game of football? And all the hands went up again about kicking and handballing and marking. And he said, you won't get it. We eventually gave in. He said, the most important skill in football is listening. Um, so as a 16-year-old, I just never forgot Kevin's first words to me um, inside a group. Um, I always remembered that about the value of talking, um, about the value of listening as a player. Um, and he was supportive. You know, I, I had a serious knee injury back then. And, and with that came a lot of um, a lot of emotional uh, uh, challenges uh, around that. And um, he was very supportive in that time as well. Uh, I was going to say, but Paul, before we get into those challenges, I know yeah. you and I have spoke privately about um, as well, mate. Um, just take us to that famous game where you're down one end and Gary Ablett Senior is down the other end. And what was it like? Take us onto that ground and you guys end up winning, but um, obviously uh, Ablett has a pretty big day out like yourself at each end. Uh, extraordinary day. And, and in a way, Jake, it's kind of flattering that it, it, it still comes up. Um, I think Fox Footy are overplaying it, to be honest, because I get, I get asked a lot about it now. It's, it's, as I said, it's lovely. Um, I was a bit of a passenger in some sense because it was the Gary Ablett show that day. Um, what he was producing uh, was quite amazing, enough for me to actually spectate him at times. Um, but look, um, the quick 30-second uh, story around that is, you know, Geelong went into that game a, a very strong side, 1992 grand final, um, I think, 1994 as well, 95. I think they were very, along with West Coast, the best side of that era. Um, and 93 Essendon was sandwiched in the middle of that. And we went into that game with, it was round six. Uh, we had one win, one draw and three losses. Um, a young side, not sure where we were yet. Um, so in, in effect, it was a really important game. It was, the, it was the game that gave us a springboard into the rest of the season. And personally, yeah, I loved it. I mean, obviously, you don't get those days too often. The sun was shining. Did you miss uh, me that day? Sorry? Did you miss many that day? Oh, yeah, I did. Gave a few off too, did yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't uh, believe you. Let's go to the replay. <laughs> yeah, I, look, I got 10 6, and I actually. 10 um, 6. I got, um, I got in at three quarter time, and, and, and uh, I'd done my hamstring halfway through the third quarter. And I, <laughs> I, 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 at that time, I'd, I was having a lot of trouble with my hamstrings, um, not through my explosive speed, just through my uh, weak hamstrings and back. And um, I went in at three-quarter time, and I knew how many goals I had. And she'd said, and this was very out of character, he said, how many have you got? And I, as any good full forward would do, um, pretended not to know. And he <laughs> says, come on, you know how many you got, tell me. And I said, oh, nine, I think it's nine. And Bruce Reed, the doctor, saying, Sheed, he's not going back on. And this was very counterintuitive to Kevin Sheedy because he's always very team first. And he said, do you want 10? And I didn't know how to answer because... It just didn't seem natural to put myself first, although I quickly became accustomed to it and said yes. <laughs> and, and he goes, well, you've got five minutes. Um, and so on reflection, in retrospect, um, Kevin had a really um, innate ability to read 
read what's important in football. Um, hmm. He got played. He got some of my teammates to 300 games. He got me into a grand uh, premiership team in 1985 when I was playing reserves in round 21. Um, he saw that moment. And because of his decision to put me back on for a few minutes uh, where I got a free kick and got my 10th goal, I get the opportunity to talk about that game today, which is yeah, now yeah, very special. You know, third, nearly 30 years later. So, it, yeah. it's, and look, it's a buzz. And I, I do remember it fondly. And I do wish Gary would start talking to the media because I'm sick of carrying his weight on this one. He's got to pull his weight some day. Start talking about it. Hey, mate, you mentioned earlier just about some of those um, mental battles that you've had during your career, Paul. Are you um, happy to talk a little bit about that, mate, and where you are today and the work mm. you're doing with the Hydro? I think it's a terrific device. I was mentioning to Dipper earlier how you know, we've tried to do some work together and we will continue to do that, hopefully, uh, through the foundation and what Hydro has. But tell us more about that, mate. Yeah, I love what you're doing, mate. And, and you know, I've congratulated before and outside the locker room. I think it's brilliant. And and you've got one of the best. Uh, I don't mean this flippantly. Um, I love Dipper. I, you know, he put his arm around me um, when I came back in 1985 after my injury. And he said it was great to have me back in the game. He may not remember it. It was at Waverley. No, I do. Waverley. Yeah. And um, that meant the world to me um, because Kevin Sheedy had brought, raised us players to believe that everyone was the enemy. And it was my first kind of insight into... The community of football um and so i've always thought the world of dipper for that oh, but look I, I i did i had um i had a uh, a huge challenge ahead of me when i did my knee because back in 84 um and your dad would tell you some stories too jake um mm. about the how hard it was in that era to come back from knee reconstructions the um uh they were complicated injuries uh players were uh, there wasn't much for me to hang my hat on in terms of you know, players having long-term successful comebacks. So I kind of, I was told that I may not come back and replay football again. So I was trying to deal with that scenario. Um, and yeah, look, I I wrote a book, an autobiography when I finished, and I couldn't talk about it in there even. Um, and I haven't talked about it much, but I uh, I found it incredibly challenging. In fact, um, so hard that I would just go missing myself. I was tr training on my own um, all the time. And to reflect on it is to reflect on a period of my life where I, I had just so much doubt. And um, but it taught me a valuable lesson about football, and that was, interestingly, I just couldn't trust it. Um, and I think for me, when I learned that I couldn't trust football, that it wasn't possibly wasn't going to be my life. Um, I really broadened my horizons, my thinking. Um, you know, by I bought my first business uh, six months after that injury, uh, I. I met my wife, Jo, of now 34 years in that period, that year after that. Um, I had a child, my first child, only two years after that injury. So a lot of things in my life kind of expanded. So I've got I've got to be balanced about this, um, although it was a very difficult time yeah. and I I could well have gone two ways on it. Um, I look back on it fondly and, and, and know that it gave me a great deal of perspective. And um, in 1980 during my comeback i was having so much trouble because I, I felt i'd forgotten how to play football i couldn't get a kick in the twos um i took it upon myself to go and engage a guy by the name of noel blundell who's a sports psychologist and dipper will tell you to do that back in the mid 80s oh, yeah. mm. was quite a, a big step because he was the first stuff, with rudy wasn't he <clears throat> yeah yeah that's right so i kind of engaged noel to help me because um although i i kept it secret because i didn't want my teammates to know that i was getting help from a sports psychologist um I think it would have been frowned upon back then, um, but no I was doubt. kind of proud of myself for doing it. Gave me a lot of help. He's a great man, and and so I've been always been a huge believer in the in the uh, need to share your your journey to to open up to the the ones you trust the most and to connect about the difficulties you're having. And um, so, although I wasn't prepared to admit that I was having uh, mental health issues, I was uh, only prepared to go in those days prepared to go as far as saying. I needed help, and I, and I'm glad I did. Now, Noel remained has remained a friend forever. Um, so that period um, of ninety of eighty four and eighty five, and then again in ninety four and ninety five, coincidentally, um, were the two toughest periods of my life. Um, in after the ninety ninety three premiership, um, in that game, I sustained an injury to my Achilles, which really hampered my following year. And um, in fact, I was much worse in that period. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't fit to play football. I know that in mm -hmm. retrospect. I shouldn't have been out there. I wasn't a good leader. I was vice captain at the Essendon Footy Club, and I, I know I stuffed that up um, in a lot of ways. So at the end of '94, I asked Kevin to leave the Footy Club because I didn't think I could um, give Essendon 100% anymore. I, 
Um, he'd always asked his players to be honest about that. And in my role as vice captain, I thought that was the least I could do. I just and and he said, look, we don't want you to go. Um, he said, so let's just give it another year. And and ninety five was a, a disaster again for me. Yeah, physically, I had my Achilles reconstructed at the end of ninety four, and then I had double hernia operations in ninety five. Um, so the whole context of going to Hawthorne at the end of that year was like a real mind blower because um, I didn't trust myself, I didn't trust my body, but I knew inside that I had something I could I could connect with and I had a self-belief that was pretty off the charts that yeah. I could probably turn it around. Um, but I reflect on those little periods of my life as having given me some strength and the five years I spent at Hawthorne with a, I'm not saying this for Dippers Bevett, but it was the best five years of my football life in a lot of ways because I rediscovered my love of the game and my love of myself and um, why I choose to do what I do. We well, actually I, spoke about that tonight, yeah. about uh, loving yourself, uh, not in, in a, you know, a big time, but no. it's sort of sad to see you believe in yourself, you have a self-confidence and, uh, you know, uh, when you went to Hawthorne, it was like, you know, you've had a great career at Essendon, but there's no more pressure about, you know, making it, whatever, you just got to get out there and enjoy the game and you want two best and first and you're, you became part of the Hawthorns, um, uh, what was it, 10th of the century? What, what was it? Yeah, you know what, you know, but the one thing I did um, promise myself, and I didn't promise myself a lot because I knew I had a lot of hurdles to jump, so I had to rebuild my body and my brain. It was a big, it was a big job. Um, but I promised myself that every time I took the field in a Hawthorne jumper, no matter how intense or how heightened I felt, that I would stop at the bottom of the race and I would smile and I would make myself smile and I would make myself appreciate what I had. Um, at Essendon, I always um, was up the front of the, the team um, behind Hamilton or Terry Danaher or, or, or Tim Watson to, to take the guys out. Um, right. I felt comfortable up that end of the, the, the queue of players. At Hawthorne, I always came out last. Um, and that wasn't, to me, there was just for me a bit of symbolism that I, I was comfortable now just being one of the, you know, back there and having that perspective of, and having the, I know it sounds corny, but just being able to watch my teammates take the field ahead of me just yeah. gave me a great deal of joy. And um, so I'd always smile, I'd always have some fun, and it just did the world of good for my footy. Hey, just before we let you go, Paul, mate, tell us about where you are today and what you're doing and the great technology you've got. I'm sure there'll be people out there very interested in involved in Thanks, schools, mate. that's for sure. Yeah, great news to hear that you've got something going here. Yeah, with, with yeah the beautiful look at that. So it's called yeah. Hi Joe. Um, oh, hi Joe. It's all hi exactly. Joe. <laughs> it's exactly what it's called that. Um, it is named after my wife and there's all good reasons for that. But um, look, uh, Hi Joe is uh, essentially a, a, a well-being, a solution for measuring well-being. Uh, what we do is collect uh, really good data on, on um, it's, it's targeted education, but we're sort of branching out into the workplace now. So it collects great data that informs um, on those at risk, on early intervention, so we can we can um, with our with our data set and our analytics start to identify kids that are developing patterns over time that could be of concern um, in terms of early phase anxiety or depression, and and you know we've had really great success in our pilots and trials, um, uh, almost ready to go to market. It's been a quite a journey, but it's a really important space. Um, we've got so many as is outside the locker room amazing programs um, to teach and instruct on resilience and empathy and and, and, and connection with yourself. Um, and there's lots of great resources for that. But there's not enough good data out there that um, can inform and provide insights into behavioural patterns over time that could actually prevent um, escalated cases of anxiety or depression and, and others. So look, I'm excited about this. It's, it's new ground. It, it, it comes in the form of a device in its first instance, but we've got a, an app that pairs with it. So Hi Joe um, was is there for you whenever and wherever you need it. Um, I wanted to make well-being a much more tangible physical experience. Um, I didn't want it to be behind a portal. Um, I didn't want anyone to have to seek it out. It, I, you know, being able to connect with others and with yourself should be something that's quite natural. And I think you know, the earlier we get kids to understand that that is a normal part of their life, that they can share their journey in a very um, safe way, then that's a good thing. And, and it comes from a very personal place because of my own son that had his own challenges in, um, uh, through his school experience. And um, when, I go to, when I get up in the morning to, to, to work on Hi Joe, I know that I'm trying to build something to give to him um, that, that won't judge him and that will give him 
the space and the um, opportunity he needs to be able to connect and to be able to create the learning experience he really desires. So thanks for the opportunity for the uh, podcast. That's great news, Paul, and uh, I know your family very, very well and uh, uh, wishes to you. How do you think we're going to get out of this uh, ISO, mate? Uh, do you think um, we're all going to get out of it uh, good or we, we're going to have problems? Well, Dip, I've got to be honest, mate. Um, you know me well enough to know I love my own company. Uh, this is... <laughs> Played right into my own hands. I've got to be honest. Um, look, look, it's it must be challenging for so many. So you don't want to be flipping about it. But I'm I'm going well. I mean, you know, um, you and I are both lucky boys, mate. Got great wives. Uh, Joe's um, stepped up, which is fantastic, and she's been working from home. Um, uh, I found out only about three weeks ago I'm going to be a grandfather. Um, oh wow! Year. Congratulations. First yeah, time. Um, yeah, first time. So oh, I'm, wow. I can't I get a smile from my face. My two girls have been married in the last twelve months, so. Look, I feel a bit conflicted because I know it's a tough time. We've just come off a terrible bushfire season into this pandemic. Mm. Everyone's, you know, most of our lives have been, you know, changed for maybe forever. Who knows? But um, for me, um, I've had some of the happiest moments of my life in the last 12 months. And I'm hanging on to that. That's what, um, that's yeah, what cool. I focus on. And you life's going to be uh, your way of being granddad. That's no! it. Uh, <laughs> I'm done, mate. Oh, I'm done. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing shadow fist pumps. No one's yeah. around. I'm just fist pumping. What do you think be called pop? Poppy? Um, pop, yeah, poppy? I think I'm a pop. I yeah, think pop. I'm a pop. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. What do you call your grandfather? What did you call your it's grandfather? Pop. Pop? Yeah. Pop. Arty. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. a non-no. Well, pop. The poppy. <laughs> That's it. Hey. Paul, great to have you on board, mate. Yeah, Paul, thank you so much, mate. And um, I think with, with Hydro, it's a, it's a watch this space. I think yeah. it's certainly going to change. It's a game changer in the system with emotional intelligence. And uh, as I've said to Paul before, we're, we're right behind and we love the support in any way we can, mate. And, and uh, thank you again for, for joining us tonight. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks Feel the much, Paul. Be good. Absolutely. Thanks, Hi, mate. Joe. Good night. See you, mate. What a champion. I think Mr. Chapman is a wonderful person, family man, and yeah, his history is, uh, is amazing. But he's yeah. learned a lot about himself, and he's always jovial. He, he's always happy to give mm. advice to people and, and, and be around people. And yeah, good on you. I really, I really enjoyed that interview. Yeah, he certainly is, and he's. Uh, I've met him a couple of times now, yeah. Paul, and I heard about this device he has, and uh, we're going to try and collaborate together with our schools program and yeah, um, collect some important data along the way, Dip and. Um, yeah, terrific guy, terrific family. Now, just talking about programs, have mm. you started your music therapy? Oh, yes, the music therapy, I have. Right. So, yes, I Are have. We, and... Can we see you <clears throat> doing something on air? Soon? Well, I, I, I yeah, assume... Yeah, why don't you assume... involved next week? It'll be about, yeah. Well, then... <laughs> <laughs> well I'll do the, you go away and do the homework right, and edit okay. and all that stuff. I have time to homework. You <laughs> but uh, I have, actually. So, last week, I started with uh, Booker and, and Asher, yeah. and it's called Sonic Minds, and... It's something I'm very passionate about, and um, I've got some lyrics on paper. We've actually done a first verse and uh, a chorus instrumental. And can we um, uh, ask what type of genre? Yeah, is? I'm going for like a punk '90s type right. of kind of feel. But what I'll do is, and I might share a bit of a snippet next week with everyone. Be great. And then uh, I'll share the end product. So I'll actually come out of this in about four weeks with a, a fully produced song, which is great. It's exciting. Uh, there's a there's a song called "I'm on Track" by Impala. I never knew the guy was. Yeah. Uh, and and when they we had on Anzac, they were all the great Australian uh, acts were on telly, and he <coughs> sang a song called "I'm I'm I'm still on track." It's yeah. Called. Yeah. Ah, oh, I just love the words. And sometimes you know we just listen to music, but the words are in part. So it's a are. love song with a bit of. Punk. It's my song. Yeah. No, it's very, it's very mental health related. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Certainly getting some I'm stuff not on crazy, paper. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. <laughs> Remember the song uh, uh, a radio here? I'm a, a creep. creep. Yeah, it's, it's well, still I a classic. I found that the other day, and that was so. It's just got me going again. Yeah, for I'm sure. A weird or, it's all right to be a creep and a weirdo. All, all those songs uh, from that generation are tremendous. Actually, my brother will get you know him and I get together. I get the guitar out. He I play that and he sings and uh, it's a very um, hey, I play drums. We should put a band. We should put a band. Yeah, we get one together. Yeah, Let's see how we go. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it and please uh, be sure to share it around. Tell all your friends and family. Share yeah. this on Facebook. And uh, we look forward to coming Don't back. Don't forget to ask week. questions, even though we don't get a chance to, uh, to read them on the air. But we thanks do. for our sponsor, Northern Motors, AFL Cards, Fan. And fan Plus. Fan Plus, yeah. So just quickly, last, finally, we've uh, been giving out our vouchers every week and we'll continue to do that. So please reach out, uh, leave your comments, share the videos around and randomly we pick out a $100 voucher from Fan Plus every week to give to, the, experience. To, their, uh, to their experiences And to Ben well. and Mark, thank you very much. Once again, they, they're just wonderful young men who get here like earlier in the day and 
do. to make sure that we sound good. They make us look all right, Tip. So yeah. have, a, have a great uh, night, everyone, and a terrific weekend. And all, please stay safe. Any more information outside the locker room, jump on our website at otlr.org.au. And we look forward to being with you all again next week. See ya. I'm Flying Doctors.